It's freaking frigid. Check it out. We got snow all over the car. We got snow everywhere. I'm cold. You're cold. We're all cold. What are we going to do? We care about our engine. We don't want we don't want another engine looking like this over here sitting in the front yard. with a big nasty hole in the block. We don't want that to happen again. So what are we gonna do? How are we gonna maintain our engine? What are we gonna do? Are we gonna start the thing up and let it warm up for about a good little 10, 15, 20 minutes and then jump in it when our seat warmers are all warm and toasty and our buns can sit on the seat and be all nice and firm and warm? Well, there's a difference of opinion. Some people say just start it right up nice and cold and just start driving. Well, what sits better with you? Do you like to just start it up and drive and get warm as you go? Or do you like the engine warm up? Well, does it matter to you or does it matter to the engine more? Well, I don't care about how you feel. I don't care about your buns. I don't care about your comfort, your comfortability. I care about the engine. What's the engine gonna do? How's the engine gonna react? Do you just starting it up in the cold weather and letting it warm up? Or are you just starting it right up and driving it? Well, we all know better than to start a cold engine and just rev it, right? We're not gonna start a stone cold engine and just go hammering on the racetrack. Everybody that's anybody should probably know that a cold engine is delicate. Let's talk about it a little bit more. Cold shrinks and hot expands. When you're really cold, there's a lot of temperature difference that has to take place. So that means the metal is going to have to, now it's not that much, but the metal is gonna have to go from shrinking to expanding. And that's gonna matter on your cylinder head gasket surface. It's gonna matter on your bearing surfaces. Every single clearance issue where the oil pressure has to be, it's going, but not only that, but the oil pressure to begin with. The oil pressure has to get to all the spots to be lubricated. Now, right here, I have a couple pouches of oil. That's pretty weird, huh? This is how they come now in the box. You take it out, and that's what the pouch looks like. Now, this stuff looks like it would still flow pretty good. It's only about 30 degrees outside right now, but you just wait until you get into the negatives. This stuff don't flow so well anymore. So what's better? Genuinely. So right here I have a owner's manual for a 2010 A4. What's the owner's manual gonna say about this situation? It says reducing unnecessary idling. Even when the car is just idling, it burns fuel. Shut the engine off when you're not driving the vehicle. Do not warm up the vehicle by letting the engine run it idle. So that part right there. Do not warm up the vehicle by letting it run it idle. Hmm. It makes sense to shut off the engine in traffic jams. <laughs> no one's going to do that. When waiting for trains to pass at railroad crossings. Yeah, right. Or at traffic lights. Ha! that have long wait times. Turning the engine off for 30 to 40 seconds saves more fuel uh, than is burned uh, starting the engine again. Well, think about it on your lawnmower. Starting a cold engine takes a lot of fuel. You gotta choke it. But when the engine's already warm, it starts right up on no choke whatsoever. It, it does not take anything to start a hot engine. So that is true. It takes a long time for the engine to warm up fully when it's running at idle. However, Wear and noxious ignitions 
are especially high when the engine is warming up, so you should drive away as soon as you start the engine and avoid running at high RPMs while the engine is still warming up. So we're looking at wear and noxious emissions. So the thing I'm worried about the most is wear, and wear is what it talks about the most. I, I'm worried about the engine and the wear. So it, theoretically, what do the engineers say about the wear? Does it actually reduce wear to warm up the engine faster? Let me bring you this part too. It talks about fewer short trips. Fuel consumption will always be relatively high on short trips. Try to avoid driving short distances with a cold engine. The engine and catalytic converter have to reach their optimal operating temperature to reduce fuel consumption and noxious emissions effectively. Just after starting, a cold engine in a mid-sized car only achieves a fuel economy of 6 to 8 miles per gallon. After about half a mile, fuel economy climbs to 12 miles per gallon. After about 2.5 miles, the engine is at a proper operating temperature. So what's it gonna hurt idle in a car? Look, I talk to a lot of engine builders and it depends on where you're from. Some people way up north, they even have to have like heated dipsticks, engine warmers, transmission warmers, all kinds of crazy stuff because it gets to like negative 40 in some of these areas. Well. Most of the country doesn't have to worry about extremes like that, so we don't even really have to worry about stuff like this. But, what are the benefits of driving off and not warming your car? Well, they say less fuel consumption, less engine wear, less emissions. Those are the big ones. Now, are you gonna have more engine wear if you let your engine idle? up for debate I don't really think so I mean the biggest thing is on a cold engine let's just go there in the owner's manual real quick we got a little break-in period section right here we might cover that in more depth in a future video but right here it says during break-in and after break-in period do not rev the engine to high speeds when it's cold so we know not to do that and this applies whether the transmission is in neutral or in gear. Do not exceed maximum engine speed under any circumstances. You can't really do that on an automatic, by the way. That has to be like a manual transmission um, when you'd put it in a downshift when you're going too fast. Upshift into the next highest gear before reaching the red area in the end of the tachometer scale. So we'll talk about some of that stuff in a different video. We'll talk about oil consumption in a different video. So in summary, why are all these engineers talking about just jumping in your cold car and driving off now, and including the engineer explained guy? Well, the downside of letting your car just warm up at idle, besides emissions, besides the slow transition from cold to hot, it can also Fuel. Fuel isn't burned fast. Fuel fuel is not, uh, it can possibly cause more carbon issues. Since you watched the end of the video, yeah, you can possibly reduce your carbon issues because, look, it, 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 the fuel burns efficiently at operating temperature. If you're trying to burn the fuel at winter frigid temperatures, you can coke up your valves, you can cause more piston carbon, you're definitely going to cause more unburnt hydrocarbons, as they could say, with a idle start, with an idle warm-up, with a slow warm-up. So, yeah, it's better for your engine to just jump. This is controversial, but it's better for just to jump in your car, start it up, and drive off without extremes. Low throttle, low engine load. That's all you gotta do, start it up, drive it. Modern engines are meant to start up and drive. You're gonna wanna stay tuned for the next video. I'm gonna be talking about oil consumption and what the owner's manual and what Audi talks about is acceptable when it comes to oil consumption and what we see 
typically happen, I'm gonna be getting into oil consumption a lot more so you can figure it out.